Aesop Fables, Volume Five. The Crab and Its Mother. A crab said to her son, "Why do you walk so one-sided, my child? It is far more becoming to go straight forward." The young crab replied, "Quite true, dear mother. And if you will show me the straight way, I will promise to walk in it." <coughs> the mother tried and tried and tried. But alas, was not able to walk straight forward as she had instructed her son to do. Moral: Example is more powerful than precept. The gnat and the bull. A gnat settled on the horn of a bull and sat there a long time. Just as he was about to fly off, he made a buzzing noise and apologized to the bull for having been such a nuisance. The bull replied, "Little gnat, thank you for the grandiose apology you felt such great need to share. But you think too highly of yourself. I didn't even notice you were there." <coughs> Moral: Some men are of more consequence in their own eyes than in the eyes of their neighbors. The lion and the gnat. Away with you, vile insect! Said a lion angrily to a gnat that was buzzing around his head, but the gnat was not in the least disturbed. Do you think, he said spitefully to the lion, that I am afraid of you because they call you king? The next instant, he flew at the lion and stung him sharply on the nose. Mad with rage, the lion struck fiercely at the gnat. But only succeeded in tearing himself with his claws. Again and again, the gnat stung the lion, who now was roaring terribly. At last, worn out with rage and covered with wounds that his own teeth and claws had made, the lion gave up the fight. The gnat buzzed away to tell the whole world about his victory, but instead he flew straight into a spider's web, and there. He who had defeated the king of beasts came to a miserable end, the prey of a little spider. Moral: The least of our enemies is often the most to be feared. The monkey and the camel. At a great celebration in honor of King Lion. The monkey was asked to dance for the company. His dancing was very clever indeed, and the animals were all highly pleased with his grace and lightness. The praise that was showered on the monkey made the camel envious. He was very sure that he could dance quite as well as the monkey, if not better. So he pushed his way into the crowd that was gathered around the monkey, and rising on his hind legs, began to dance. But the big hulking camel made himself very ridiculous as he kicked out his knotty legs and twisted his long, clumsy neck. Besides, the animals found it hard to keep their toes from under his heavy hooves. At last, when one of his huge feet came within an inch of King Lion's nose, the animals were so disgusted that they set upon the camel in a rage and threw him out of the party. Moral. Do not try to ape your betters. The monkey and the dolphin. It happened once upon a time that a certain Greek ship bound for Athens was wrecked off the coast close to Piraeus, the port of Athens. Had it not been for the dolphins, who at that time were very friendly toward mankind and especially toward Athenians, all would have perished. But the dolphins took the shipwrecked people on their backs and swam with them to shore. Now it was the custom among the Greeks to take their pet monkeys and dogs with them whenever they went on a voyage. So when one of the dolphins saw a monkey struggling in the water, he thought it was a man and made the monkey climb up on his back. Then off he swam with him toward the shore. The monkey sat up, grave and dignified, on the dolphin's back. You are a citizen of illustrious Athens, are you not? Asked the dolphin politely. Yes, answered the monkey proudly. My family is one of the noblest in the city. Indeed, said the dolphin. 
Then, of course, you often visit Piraeus. Yes, yes, replied the monkey. Indeed, I do. I am with him constantly. Piraeus is my very best friend. The answer took the dolphin by surprise, and turning his head, he now saw what it was he was carrying. Without more ado, he dived and left the foolish monkey to take care of himself, while he swam off in search of some human being to save. Moral One falsehood leads to another. The Monkey and the Cat Once upon a time, a cat and a monkey lived as pets in the same house. They were great friends and were constantly in all sorts of mischief together. What they seemed to think of more than anything else was to get something to eat, and it did not matter much to them how they got it. One day, they were sitting by the fire, watching some chestnuts roasting on the hearth. How to get them was the question. I would gladly get them, said the cunning monkey, but you are much more skillful at such things than I am. Pull them out and I'll divide them between us. The cat stretched out her paw very carefully, pushed aside some of the cinders, and drew back her paw very quickly. Ouch! Then she tried it again this time pulling a chestnut half out of the fire. A third time, and she drew out the chestnut. This performance she went through several times, each time singeing her paw severely. As fast as she pulled the chestnuts out of the fire, the monkey ate them up. Now the master came in, and away scampered the rascals, Mistress Cat with a burnt paw and no chestnuts. From that time on, they say, she contented herself with mice and rats and had little to do with Sir Monkey. Moral The flatterer seeks some benefit at your expense.